Four more new AEW contracts have been revealed, but first we have more on the Elite's new AEW deals. Prior to this week's AEW 200 special episode, news broke that Kenny Omega, Hangman Page and the Young Bucks had all put pen to paper on a brand new deal that will keep them with all Elite Wrestling for many years to come. The news followed months of speculation regarding their future, with it being reported that WWE would have had interest in bringing all four men in were the opportunity to present itself. Dave Meltzer would provide several updates on the Elite's decision to remain all Elite in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, noting that the group had a pact to stay together no matter what, and he would write, whether it be in WWE or AEW, they basically had made an agreement that it was going to be majority rules. It had gone back and forth, but essentially, whatever it was, three of the four or four of the four made the deal. But they all had agreed that they were going to go together as a group, either to WWE or stay as a group, so it was not going to be a split up. The report notes that whilst it's not confirmed, the belief is that the deals are four years in length, meaning Hangman, Omega and the books will be sticking around until 2027 at a minimum. It was revealed that Tony Khan made a significant offer to sign the Elite early to ensure they had new contracts before entering the free agency market where a bidding war could take place, a mistake he perhaps learned from with his dealings with Cody Rhodes. And Meltzer would add, Obviously, the numbers financially were very high because if they weren't very high, they wouldn't have signed at this point because they had until the end of the year to negotiate. Obviously, AEW and Tony Khan wanted them signed now and made it worth their while financially to sign now. Which, the point of this is, he did the same with Roosh, is that he is not shying away from spending money whatsoever. Regarding the aforementioned interest from WWE, Dave would add that the company had a particular interest in signing Kenny Omega and that he would have been used at the top of the card in the mix with guys such as Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar, although his long-term physical durability did raise concerns as to how long he had left inside the ring. Either way, such concerns from WWE are now moot with the cleaners set to stick around in All Elite Wrestling for many years to come. And next up, we have the latest on the potential push for this popular WWE superstar. Over recent months, LA Knight has received some of the loudest babyface reactions on WWE television as of late, with him proving to be one of the company's most popular stars despite his heel presentation. On top of this, a recent report from Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics revealed that the megastar sold the most merchandise on the roster in the month of July, showing that the wider fanbase are showing him support, not just those in the arena. Taking to their main site last night, PW Insider would provide an update on the internal feeling towards Knight and the perception that they're not willing to get behind him and they would write, WWE sources indicate that this is all by plan and that Knight's standing with the company is held extremely high by executives. Internally, he's been praised for getting himself over and breaking the mold of what was given to him creatively and being an even stronger character than was once envisioned for him on the main roster. One source they spoke to would compare Knight's recent run as Max Dupree to Steve Austin's initial run as the Ringmaster, a bad gimmick that ultimately motivated him to push on to the next level. PW Insider would conclude by saying that WWE are waiting for the right moment in time to hit the ground running with Knight, but for now he is being used in a way that won't waste his appearances. WRKD Wrestling would then later take to Twitter to add to PW Insider's report, revealing that there are individuals that have concern over over any potential delays to LA Knight's push and they would tweet, we can add that there are parties worried that the company won't strike while the iron is hot and momentum will fade as they've done with some in the past. Next up, could this former WWE champion be ready to return to WWE? This Saturday night, WWE will host this year's SummerSlam event from Detroit, Michigan, a show that could potentially be the home of a long-awaited return. According to a fresh report from PW Insider, former NXT and WWE United States champion Bobby Roode has been spotted in town ahead of the show, and Mike Johnson would write, WWE star Bobby Roode, who has been out of action since 2022 with numerous neck surgeries, has been spotted in Detroit ahead of this Saturday's SummerSlam event. There is no word on if Roode is in line for an appearance at the show itself, although he has notably been off the road since June 2022, with the timing of the story interesting to say the least. Bobby hasn't been seen on WWE television since the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal held on SmackDown prior to WrestleMania in April 2022, with his last actual match taking place on a house show in Amarillo, Texas two months later. 
And next, what is the stipulation for Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar 3? At SummerSlam on Saturday night, we will see the conclusion of the Brock versus Cody trilogy, with fans wondering if a stipulation will be in place to spice things up in Detroit. We now have an update from Fightful Select that rules out this possibility, with them reporting that as of now, there is no plan in place beyond a straight up singles bout. The report would then address recent rumours that the two could meet inside a dog collar match, and Fightful would write, there were rumours that a dog collar match was pitched for Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Sources close to both sides confirmed that the idea of a stipulation was never on the cards for the match. We're told that the limit of the idea was does this match need a stipulation and it was agreed that it didn't and wasn't broached again. We specifically asked if a dog collar match was on the cards or mentioned as rumoured but were told that didn't happen. Whilst the dog collar match between Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar does sound interesting given the size and power difference in the Beast's favour, it looks like this isn't happening. This of course wouldn't be the first time Rhodes has been in that situation before, with him last wrestling in a dog collar match during his stint in AEW, where he defeated Brody Lee in the former AEW TNT Champions last ever match. Next up, let's go to some of the key stories from Wednesday's episode of AEW Dynamite, where a former WWE Champion made his All Elite Wrestling debut. Just hours prior to this week's Dynamite 200 special, a report would drop on Fightful Select that revealed plans were in place for a match between current FTW Champion Jack Perry and former ECW and WWE Champion Rob Van Dam. While the story would prove itself to be true not too long after, as Jerry Lynn would show up to announce that whilst he isn't able to be medically cleared to take Jack on, he has a friend who is, before bringing out the whole effing show for his All Elite Wrestling debut. Perry would then run away with his tail between his legs, although he won't be able to avoid RVD for too long, with a match between the two now being confirmed. Perry and Van Dam are now scheduled to meet next week on AEW Dynamite under FTW rules, which we can assume is no disqualification, with the FTW title on the line. Of course, the FTW belt was founded in Extreme Champions Championship Wrestling in 1998, and it'll be interesting to see how far AEW take this Jack Perry vs ECW angle going forward, and if more of the company's alumni will make future appearances. Next up, the AEW All In London main event has been confirmed. Wednesday's show would see an appearance from reigning AEW World Champion MJF, who would open up to the Tampa crowd about his struggles growing up with ADD and RSD, with the treatment from others towards him shaping the scumbag he has turned into today. In a segment that appears to be setting up a babyface turn, would see Max tell the crowd that whilst he isn't perfect, he wants to be their scumbag. He would then bring out his current tag team partner and on-screen friend Adam Cole with the champion offering the shot at the AEW World Championship at no other than All in London at Wembley Stadium later this month, with the two signing a contract to confirm the match. The segment can seemingly be taken two ways. First, MJF is fooling Adam Cole into signing an agreement that he didn't read, with there potentially being small print in the contract that eventually comes back to bite the challenger. Or secondly, it's Adam Cole that eventually turns, solidifying MJF's spot as a top babyface in the company, ready for a future feud with a heel real world champion CM Punk. Cole turning was hinted at by a subtle stabbing motion into the back of Max when they embraced for a hug, something that he also did to Roderick Strong prior to a later attack during their days in NXT. The Kingdom also looked to be prepped to play a role in the storyline, as Roderick Strong, who has insisted Cole not trust MJF over recent weeks, was seen destroying his surroundings backstage after the segment with Ruth Frustration. He was then confronted by Cole's former Kingdom stablemates Mike Bennett and Matt Taven, who told Strong that Cole always forgets about his friends, a sign that they could be linking up as a trio going forward. Next up, a brand new champion has been crowned in All Elite Wrestling. Now let's move on to the AEW Dynamite 200 main event, where AEW Women's World Champion Tony Storm would put her title on the line against Hikaru Shida, who held the belt through the majority of the pandemic era. In the end, Shida would finally get the chance to hold the AEW Women's title in front of a large crowd, with a high stack cover being enough to pin Storm's shoulders down for the free count, a win she pulled off despite heavy interference from the outcast. The moment would bring the AEW Dynamite 200 special to a close with a new champion standing under the falling confetti, sparking a new era for the AEW women's division. Taking to Twitter after the show, Hikari would reference the fact that she now gets to be champion in front of crowds and roads 
I did it, you all did it, we did it together because I couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you so much, I heard you this time. And next, Kenny Omega has teased an appearance on AEW Collision. For our final story coming from AEW Dynamite at least, let's go back to the most newsworthy subject of the week within AEW, that being the new contracts of Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks and Hangman Page. On the show, Omega and The Bucks would find themselves in a match with Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh and Jay Lethal, about they would ultimately come out on top on with the help of The Hardys and Hangman Page. After the match, Hangman would let those that didn't see the announcements aware of the news and said, you know, I don't know if you've seen, but there's been a big announcement today that the Elite have re-signed with AEW. So tonight, Dynamite 200, we're so happy to be here and here's to the next 200. Interestingly, Omega would then take to the mic, teasing an appearance on AEW Collision sometime in the future, perhaps yet another sign that we will eventually see CMFTR versus the Elite and the Cleaner would say, and whether it be Dynamite, Ring of Honor, Rampage, heck, even Collision, you're going to be seeing more of us. And next, four more new AEW contracts have been revealed. The Elite weren't the only AEW talents to put pen to paper on new deals recently, as Evil Uno has taken to Twitter to joke about the Dark Order's lack of big announcements, and he would write, Dark Order also re-signed, where's our press release? This was then confirmed by Fightful Select to not be a joke, with them revealing that Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds and John Silver recently re-signed to three-year contracts and will be all elite until 2026. Kip Sabian would also take to Twitter to confirm that he too has put pen to paper on a new deal, a contract confirmed to be three years in length in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter. But what do you make of these brand new AEW contracts? Let me know in the comments down below. And before you go, make sure you check out 10 facts that MJF doesn't want you to know. 